So, all right. Oh, check it out. I got universes. So, um, I was working on a little VR thing. Doesn't have to be VR, but um, for uh, observing solar systems. So I have a very simple one here, but let's just warp really quickly to our second system. Um, so I have, you know, um, movements on these planets. Uh, some of them are moving very slowly, but um, they are traveling around the solar system and also rotating on their axes. There's one with the moon right there. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to create a simple way that I could create various galaxies. Um, so let's, here we go, let's go to our third galaxy. So here's a very different one, the green galaxy. But anyway, um, so this is actually uh, a combination of uh, shaders and particle effects. Um, and, um, and then some simple animation. So there's... Uh, animation on some of these shaders where I'm just passing um, uh, a ramp to the shader and then what I'm doing is I'm sort of uh, changing the influence of that ramp. Um, so uh, all of these are actually created with the same basic base shader and that's kind of what I wanted to show. Um, there's a, there's a, hold on, what do we have? Is there, there we go, Death Star. Um, so all of these are based on the same basic shader, which is a, a kind of a burn shader. So I thought we could take a look at that. And uh, the shield too is that part of that same shader. So if I pop out of here, you can actually see I have this very simple setup. I have uh, three galaxies, three different colors. Um, so if I come in here to galaxy numero uno, um, you can see that all of all of the stars are, are just a particle effect. The nebulae are also part of that particle effect nested under here. Um, so I can very quickly create a new galaxy by um, just changing a few uh, easy parameters. Um, the uh, galaxies themselves just have an unlit color as the background, um, but they have an inverted sphere. And so I can go inside that sphere. Um, and then once I look at the, um, the particle effects, um, then I can see that that will kind of fill my uh, volume with these things. So I'm only putting the stars on the outer edges so that from the player's perspective they'll get a lot of depth but actually there's just two uh, layers of stars here on spheres. But um, the this kind of self-contained galaxy I can you know easily copy it uh, and duplicate it and then I can quickly create uh, you know a fourth galaxy um, just by modifying a few parameters. If I go to galaxy number four um, and I uh, create a new material for it. There's galaxy three so obviously I need to have galaxy four and then I can create galaxy four it can be a, a burning yellow galaxy I guess. Why not? So um, then galaxy three is up there so let's close that. So we have galaxy four. Galaxy four is going to get galaxy four and so now I have this kind of burning yellow galaxy. Um, that's pretty bright. Let's turn that down. And then, you know, it's just, there we go. All right, and then inside Galaxy 4, all I have to do is take a look at my near stars, far stars, and nebulae. So my stars uh, have different colorations, so I can make some orange stars, uh, and sometimes maybe they're a bright yellow. And then my nebulae, of course, are also going to be probably red to some kind of deep orange. Or if I want to be interesting, I can go red to like a purpley. Now I'll just turn that effect down. And then I can, uh, you know, I can change the emission to be a little bit less if I want less nebulae or a little bit higher if I want more nebulae. That looks kind of cool. Let's leave that. So. Um, and of course I can change the, the size uh, and, and so on. But um, so that gives me a basic galaxy, that's pretty simple. And then all the planets in here, I can um, you know rearrange them pretty quickly. But uh, the important thing is that when I have all these planets in the solar system, they're, they're already each you know animated and uh, set to also move revolve around the player. So they're not true orbits, they're circular orbits. Um, but the cool thing is when I come in here, 
so I have that orange universe, so probably I want some fiery planets. So if I wanted to, to create uh, a fiery planet, I'm going to use this shader that I've been using uh, quite a lot, which is right here, you can see it, my burn dissolve shader. So this shader is pretty cool, um, and uh, it's what I've used for pretty much everything in this scene. So let's create a new planet based on planet 3, and we'll call this planet 6 because I'm, I'm not being very creative with my names. So I'm going to apply planet 6 to this planet, and right now it's the same, so let's change that. So on my burn dissolve, I have some neat features. I have the normal texture, um, or the, you know, the standard texture uh, of what I want to apply to that planet. So um, I don't know if I have a good burn texture here for a planet. Let's put this kind of cracked earth. Um, and then for my slice guide, the slice guide is going to uh, clip the texture and erase it. So it's going to use this guide to erase out the texture. So if I turn that down, so it's just going to uh, cut away at the texture using this uh, as a clipping guide or a slicing guide. So this is a weird uh, texture, but I can really use anything. It's just the alpha channel that matters. So if I use a, something like this hair texture, it's going to peel away, you know, uh, like hair. So I can use really any texture to slice this away that I want. Um, I'm just going to pick something blotchy. Uh, usually, obviously, I'd go into Photoshop and paint something black and white. Um, but anyway, so I have this sort of slicing away. Uh, and then on the edges of my slice, I can add uh, this ramp. So this ramp just comes from a little texture ramp. Um, so let's get a fire. Let's just type ramp and see what I have. All right, so let's use our this. That's kind of cool. Or maybe the burn ramp. No, let's use this. So we have a little ramp here that's going from black to white. And so I can change how much of that ramp is going up on this edge here. And what this is kind of allowing me to do is cheat a little bit. So planets probably wouldn't be transparent, but because I'm using this, uh, this texture and the burn ramp, I can actually just cut it very slightly uh, and then burn it. And then what I'll do is I'll get this ramped effect based on the cuts here. So it's actually based on these two things. And the other thing this gives me, which is pretty neat, is that it gives me the ability to kind of animate this and pulse it. So if I really wanted to make a planet, I probably wouldn't want to cut it at all. I'd, um, instead of making this a burn dissolve, it would just be a burn and I would modify that parameter to um, affect the edges without cutting through the transparency. But I'm being a little bit lazy right now. so. I have my fire planet, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate this. So if I click on my fire planet, um, I'm just going to set the parameters in the shader. Um, and uh, I could do that in C Sharp very easily, but I just have a, a little Playmaker brain set up here to make it even easier. So in my FSM, I have uh, two FSMs. This one's very simple. It just rotates the object uh, around its own axis, and then it rotates it around a world axis. But then uh, I have another FSM which controls uh, talking to the material. So in state number one, it's going to um, ease from the minimum value to the maximum value and control the slice value. Um, and then it's going to set that material, um, which is that slice amount, that slice value, to that uh, amount. So if I just look at my variables here, my min and max are exposed in the inspector. So if I look here, I have my min, my max, and then the time that it takes, I've created a variable for that too, to uh, ease between them. And then it'll ease back and forth. So um, that's a very simple little animation. And the cool thing is that I can just come in here in my inspector, and I can look at the, my burn size and my slice amount, and I can see, okay, my minimum is going to be around here. Uh, and so I'm just going to copy that and put it into my minimum value. And then my maximum that I want it to animate to is this is, I don't want it to actually dissolve the planet. Um, I just want this kind of fire running over the planet. So I'm going to say it goes to like there. Uh, and then I'm going to put that into my max value. And then the time that it takes to go in between them, let's put three seconds. Actually, let's put two seconds so we can kind of see this. And then I'm going to uh, just sort of watch this planet. And so this planet's also moving, but 
I think you'll be able to see that this material is um, is animating. So you can see that that, anim that animation is happening on the shader itself, on the material, and that's easing in and out of those values. And uh, you can see that if I come down here, that when I come down here, you'll see that my slice amount is being controlled uh, by script, you know, by the FSM, but obviously just as easily by script. So now I have this kind of animating planet in my fire world um, using that burn dissolve shader. And I can just uh, keep adding these. All of these are added that way and animated that way. So um, I can very quickly, um, you know, if I actually painted up some proper textures and then also um, modified the burn shader so that it, it isn't clipping straight to transparency, um, then I could create all sorts of effects. But with the clip to transparency, um, I can get the fun Death Star effect where something can actually teleport in and then teleport out. So that's where that effect comes from. And then also this effect here, the uh, the shield, that is the same thing, the burn effect. And that's happening because I am, uh, let's put our player here. Um, that's happening because I'm putting this around the player camera, this ball, and then when I click, I'm dissolving it away. So it's pretty simple. Anyway, um, that's what I'm doing with that shader, and uh, that's a couple of ways that you could use a, a burn dissolve shader to get a lot of variety very quickly.